Hi, so uh, we are going to go ahead and add a simple choice activity. So this is, might be an example where you need students to sign up for groups assignments or sign up for uh, topics for research or just anything where you need people to go in and make some kind of a choice. You could use this for voting for different options. There's lots of different ways that you could use the choice activity. So let's go ahead and uh, click on Add Activity and Choice. Call this sample choice activity. I'm going to just add in some standard text for a, for an activity that I've used. Um, so we have our introduction, we have instructions, and what to turn in for your grade. Always a good thing for the student to know. Um, uh, so uh, then we have display description on course page. That's if you want this description text to be present on the course page. Remember that the introductory text is really the instructions for the student. That's where you're going to give your, your you know, that is the lesson uh, for the student, especially if you're not going to be there in person. Okay, so we have um, limit of number of responses allowed. So this is a good way. Let's say that you're wanting to choose groups and you want a maximum of three people per group. Um, so we could say that we're, you know, for example, let's say that we're choosing um, uh, research topics. Okay, so each, you know, each maybe each group would have would have to be researching a particular topic. In this case, let's say that we're having them choose groups for um, to research a particular uh, type of. Um, I'll go with what I know, a particular programming language. So let's say that we have um, one group uh, is going to uh, choose Python, and I need five people total in that group. Let's say that another group is going to choose C++, and I need a total of three people in that group. Let's say that um, another group is going to do C Sharp, and we need four people in that group. Let's say another one is doing Visual Basic. And we need five, six people in that group. Let's see, another one is doing. Uh, let's see, another one is doing um, JavaScript. Okay, and we need five, four people in that group. Okay, and then we can add fields if we want. We can restrict the answering time period that this is available. Um, we can say uh, we can also say where to display horizontally. Do not publish results to students. This is a really interesting one. So we can show results to students after they answer, which is really nice. Um, uh, publish anonymous results, do not share student names. Uh, publish full results, showing names and their choices. Allow choice to be updated, we're going to leave this as no. Show column for unanswered, and we're going to leave that as no. Um, OK, so we're going to go ahead and save and display. And this is going to show us what the student would be able to see here. Okay, notice that because they're displayed horizontally, that might have caused a problem. Okay, so now this would have been all of my introductory text. That were, that's where I would have given my instructions. So that's my introductory text, and then finally, this is the this is the actual selection they would have to make. So once I click Save My Choice, notice that once I click Save My Choice, you selected Python, and notice that each one is going to have each response is going to have its own column with the names of the people that select it. So this is a really great way to break students up into groups or show different choices for a particular uh, single question. I hope that helps.